breakfast puppies? Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. In every episode, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will filibuster fondly over facts and feelings of your favorite films, and then get to the glorious gaming goodness, giving Game Masters great gimmicks on generating golden genius. Have Movies Will Game, brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! Tell me, what is best in life? To crush your enemies. To see them driven before you. And hear the lamentations of their women. That's because we're doing Conan the Barbarian. Dun, 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 dun. The one that always gets stuck in my head is the... During the like snake orgy. The orgy scene. The snake orgy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's right. We're doing the 1982 classic with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Conan the Barbarian. This is something that we've been talking about doing since we started this damn podcast. And it's a shame that Matthew's not here. Yeah. Because this one was specifically for him. But his life is extremely hectic right now. So uh, perhaps we will get his feedback on it later as some bonus content. But for now, you're listening to Have Movies Will Game. And... I'm Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. And joining us today are our special guests. Poppy Beaujolais. And Alex. And we are uh, hoping to fill Matthew's asshole role at the table. <laughs> with, uh, I. What would you like Poppy. me to fill Matthew's asshole with? Oh, oh. Can I help? Oh. Uh, the and, uh, lamentations of, of women. The, oh, well, uh, mm. <laughs> oh no. no! What I was no. thinking is that we'll have him listen to this episode later, and uh-huh. we'll record him like riffing it. Yeah, that'll we'll, work. Just, we'll record like we'll just do like a Matthew reacts to this episode as like a bonus content. That would be, I think, that would be good. Oh my god, we should totally do that, Matthew. Yeah, that if works. you're listening, you need to let us know uh, your your little points where you're going to chime in, so we can splice them in as a special extended thing. It'd be great. I, think I would really like that. that. I think that would be awesome. That actually sounds cool. Yeah, I'm down. So yeah, Conan. This movie was seminal. It was. It it's founded in, my love of sword and sorcery. It is in oh, my yeah. top five of movies. Yeah. This movie was a lot better than I remembered it. And I think I realized that I had only seen the made for television cut Ooh, of this I'm movie. So sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I really need to sit down and watch it start to finish again and really enjoy it. All right, so a question I have, because I know whenever sometimes we talk about when we do a movie, there sometimes are longer versions, and sometimes we kind of aren't on the same page. Which version did you guys watch? How do we know? Uh, the one way that you'll know is at the end, before the, the final battle, before the climactic battle at the end, Conan and Supatai are having a conversation, and Conan gives a speech about how he's 21 years old, and he has spent like 15 years hunting Thulsa Doom. It, we did not see that. We version. did not see that yeah. version. Okay, okay, that's the one okay. that I wow. watched. Yeah, he gives this this like rousing speech about how his life really. If if they win, he like has no meaning in his life once Thulsa Doom is dead, and he doesn't know what he's going to do. That actually was mm. supposed to open the door because Schwarzenegger was signed for four four Conan movies. What? Oh, yes, wow. four Conan movies that were supposed to. There was, was supposed to be the symbolism behind it was supposed to be uh, shown. A lot of it was shown in the movie. With the sword, the sword being made, his father's sword. One, first movie was supposed to be the sword being made. The second movie was supposed to be a sword being broken. The third was hmm. finding a new one. And then a fourth one was him creating his own, being uh, uh, metaphorical to him creating his own kingdom. But the second movie tanked so bad that it, everything got shelved. Yeah. The second, the second movie, which we we're not talking about this evening, is... Horrible. I I just watched it. I enjoyed it. It's a fun movie, but it's very different from the first one. It's a comedy. It's a comedy, which I could see why it tanked. Mm -hmm. Because it had Grace Jones in it. Grace Jones. She's. Yeah. Yeah. 
but it had also if uh, like they invested heavily, I think, in Johnson Johnson's baby oil for, <laughs> for uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger because he was glistening in that movie the entire time. Like, yeah, the second movie was a lot like cleaner and prettier yeah. compared to the first movie, which is really dirty. And we're going to get into that. We're not talking about the second. We're movie. We're not talking about the second movie. <laughs> no, we're talking about the first movie, which is beautiful. So, Dusty, of course, being our co-host here on Happy Movies One Game, and Poppy being heavily involved in a lot of the podcasts that we do here at the Breakfast Puppy Studio. But Alex is one of my oldest friends, and he's also uh, one of my one of the people that in my brain when I think somebody who likes Conan is Alex. It's like that yeah. old Mitch Hedberg joke. Why don't people <laughs> think you got long hair, you really like cake? Well, Alex has long hair, and he really likes Conan. That's in my brain. That makes sense. That that works. I accept I, that this. works. Yeah. It actually came up while we were we we were watching the movie the other night. There was some talk that we were going to maybe be either not have Matthew here or he was only going to be here for part of it. Yeah. And if would I be on the would I be on the podcast to kind of help round things out and offer an opinion a perhaps a female or feminist opinion regarding uh, Conan and uh, Red Sonia? No, I'm just kidding. Um. But then I was just like, you know what? We need Alex here. We really need <laughs> Alex here. And here you are. I'm here now. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm real happy to be pleased as punch. So what was the last time you saw this movie, Alex? Oh, uh, I found a copy of it on VHS in my apartment complex. Uh, and, <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, it was great. Um, and watched it on that. So it's probably been a good five years. Oh, oh yeah. wow. The memories are not fresh. I remember the good some of the good stuff. But you have brought this stack of Conan I books. I brought this <laughs> lovely stack of Conan the books. Stack of Conan books. There. But read, read off. Read off the titles. What do we have right. here? So we've got Conan the Conqueror. We've got uh, the actual book, uh, The Hour of the Dragon. Uh, we've Conan of the Isles. Conan of Aquilonia. Uh, Conan the Avenger. Conan the Usurper. Ooh. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna we're gonna pause. We're gonna watch the movie, and we're gonna be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I just finished watching it earlier, so no, yeah, that's not yeah. going to happen. And yeah. we're back. So. <laughs> wow, amazing! That was so much fast. better than I blink. remember. So much better than you remember, right? It, it, oh, amazing! <laughs> In the last three days, I watched Conan the Barbarian, Conan the Destroyer, the new Conan the Barbarian, Red Sonia, and three of the Death Stalker movies. And, and oh, when, when we say new Conan movie, it's, it's 2011. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's been a few years, but that's the one with Jason Momoa, which is is actually we were talking about this earlier. Yeah. It's a well done Conan movie, except for Rose McGowan, in my opinion. She kind of I can agree with she that. She kind of made that movie drag a little bit. But like I said earlier, I think a lot of people uh, put it off to the side because looking through the lens of what they know of Conan is Conan doesn't doesn't speak a lot. And reading the books, Conan does. He's a he's a he's well versed in multiple languages. He's a tactician. He he knows his shit. And because of Schwarzenegger's heavy accent at the time, yeah. they limited his his speaking part in this movie. So through that lens of, oh, I only know Conan because of Arnie, they were wondering, why is this guy talking so much? He's not supposed to. It kind of made sense to me in some ways. I know they go through that whole thing of him, like, showing his education and showing, you know, saying you know, point blank, like he learned languages and he learned all these things and he learned the ways of women and all that, all that fun stuff. He was bred to the finest bred stock. Bred to the finest stock. <laughs> <laughs> you had some pretty good lamentations that night. Oh. Oh, man. Oh, so many O crumbs that evening. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it kind of made sense to me since he was, you know, traumatized horribly as a little boy and then sent to work on the freaking wheel of pain mm -hmm. for 15 years or whatever. It was. What did that wheel do? I don't, it, it was a it was a well. It was a well. It, it kind of well. looked like a like a like it was a grinding something, but it was pumping. Yeah, it was, it was a well. Oh, yeah, okay. it's not like, just like here's this torture wheel in the middle of the desert. Torture wheel because kinda, we I mean, fucking right. you. basically it, nothing. It kind of made sense to me to be like, oh, he doesn't talk much because he wasn't socialized very well and he's horribly traumatized. So of course he doesn't talk very much. For you, you might find interest of this, uh, possibly. Well, actually, I think you might, Alex. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the four dragon heads on top of that wheel of pain that he's pushing. Yeah, uh, they are exact replicas of the dragon heads on, and I'm probably not going to pronounce this properly. Uh, the Gox, the Gokstad Shippa. It's a Viking ship in the ninth century. It's oh, exact that's awesome. rep replicas. 
the costumes and the scenery and the set design in this movie were on point. Oh, yeah. it's gorgeous. Amazing. They, this whole series of movies they did, it's like that's where they put their budget. Well, the, <laughs> one of the cool things with it was the director with the, with the, spoke to the costuming heads ahead of time and said, listen, I know you're, you're making a lot of like leather armor and it's not going to look like it's been used. So during like the six months of rehearsals when they were out battling and everything, uh, the the director demanded everybody to be in full costume nice. for during rehearsal. So it would get that used look to it, which is awesome yeah. because if you take brand new like leather armor and then go film, it's going to obviously look like it's never been worn in battle. And a lot of these characters didn't have the money to do anything. So they had their old armor. So it worked for me. That was awesome. Mm. Yeah. And the sheer number of extras in that oh god especially at the one end one scene oh, yeah. when they're yeah. all gonna go put their torches out they will they they, they end up putting their torches out yeah just like okay we need two thousand italians in white <laughs> robes and they all need to have torches and they all need to attempt to move at the same time yeah, yeah that was that was just, fucking amazing the logistics of that scene must have been daunting oh and it's going to be like four four nights of night shoots with a bunch of extras like at two in the morning being like just keep standing there but I will hearken back to something that you said earlier, Puppy. This movie was far deeper than I remember it being. Very it was much. Yeah. Better than I remember it being. Because I, you know, I remember as a teenager, as a kid, a teenager, I saw the VHS and whatever. I never saw the television version. We, we were a step up above that. <laughs> but we, I apparently wasn't. <laughs> I just remember it being kind of schlocky and not making any sense to me, except, you know, Conan and, and Dead Lady and. That's about it. That's all I remember. Oh, and headless dude at the end and the head falling. That's all I had actually remembered. And then seeing it again, it's like this is it is just a better told story than I remember it being. The shots of his life, everything hearkening back to the different moments, and you can see like the skills that he learned, when he learned them, how he put them to use, but also you can see his like that intelligence and that compassion that they spoke of him being taught. You see it come back later, like that intimate moment with with Valeria after their big score when mm -hmm. he gives her the jewel and then they go out and screw. But it doesn't end there. It keeps going. They have a relationship. They they sit up all night talking to each other, laughing, having tender moments. It's like, I didn't actually remember that. And then the, the, that same moment where she's pouring out her heart about being alone and yeah. looking in the tents of everybody else. Yeah, it was a, it's, that's a very good scene. Now, going to the lovemaking aspect, uh, Schwarzenegger and Sandal Bergman, who played Valeria, neither of them had ever done a lovemaking scene that was their first lovemaking scene so they both said it was very awkward <laughs> because they had never done that imagine. so um uh bergman was this was like her first real role role quote unquote she was a professional dancer on broadway and was in um fozzy's um all, all that jazz Bob Fosse? yeah Fosse. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah Fosse. all that jazz, jazz yes Fosse, Fosse, uh, so this was her first movie um the guy that played Supatai, Jerry Lopez, he was a champion surfer and had like little to no acting experience. His only notable previous film was he played himself in uh, John Millis's Big Wednesday, which was a couple years prior to this. So hmm. the the only person that had any kind of kind of acting was Schwarzenegger. And the only reason he got the role was because he was big. And Millis saw him in his documentary Pumping Iron and said, I want him. Get him. Let's do it. And he said yes. And they managed to, they, and presumably the director, managed to get a lot of, again, he didn't talk hardly at all, but they managed to get some really amazing moments out of him just from catching angles, catching glances, you know, different little expressions and just everything combined. You really got the... You really got a lot of acting out of Arnie without a lot of actual <laughs> acting, which yeah. was kind of amazing. Just stoic staring. Just stoic staring yeah. and beautiful music and angles and lighting and just everything. Well, we, we talked about with the John Wick film where, where everybody makes fun of Keanu Reeves not really being able to, to act, but just he emoted so much in that movie. You could see what was going through him with his face. And, and just kind of following up on what you said, Poppy, um, yeah, Schwarzenegger did a really good job of like emoting exactly what he needed to in that moment. 
and the there are interviews that he was that he's talked about uh, James Earl Jones and Max von Sydow helping coach him on set. Like this is how nice. you need Aww. to be an actor. This is what it takes. And Schwarzenegger has been uh, been gone on saying that this was like the movie that he he puts it like. This is the movie that God made me an actor. This is like where everything <laughs> wow. like put him out there for that yeah. because of this yeah. movie. And and I thought that was really cool because the only other two people two people that had any major acting experience was James uh, Earl Jones, James and, Max Earl Jones and Max von Sydow. Uh and re- initially Sean Connery was considered for the role of Tulsa Doom. No. Yeah. Now this would have been early 80s Sean Connery, nope. so Still, because I'm your father, Conan. Because because there was still there was the there was a uh, he did another James Bond movie you in like the eighties. I like that... snakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take S words. I mean swords. Oh, and, I like snakes uh, and snakes. Snakes oh, five hundred. Oh, I mean Conan. Conan. <laughs> Sorry, what? It's, uh, it's it's past now. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Dusty. It's totally okay. It's totally okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was gonna. I was gonna say to follow up on that. If you Thulsa Doom is a charismatic cult leader, very much. And who better to play that than James Earl Jones? He His was eyes. mesmerizing. Yeah. Yes. Well, and then that was the point. Playing yes. playing set. It was the the, the snake eyes and. You know, mes- like a snake does, I, you know, charming you and then killing you. I may have joined his cult. Oh, like, I would have. <laughs> like, holy shit. I would have. was, I just, I could not take my eyes off him anytime he was on the screen. There there was an article I read that, that James Earl Jones said that coming into this movie, he wasn't as in shape as he would like to be. They were going to, you know, put him in armor and make him ride on a horse and carry a sword and everything. And this was before he knew that Schwarzenegger was was part of the. He didn't even really know who Schwarzenegger was. And the director was like, "Baby, I got you. Don't even worry about it. Don't, we're he, you're, you're going to be fine." So <laughs> James Earl Jones helped with the acting bit, yeah. and Schwarzenegger helped like train him and get him a little more. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah, you know, it was kind of it was very. They became very. All three of them became you know lifelong friends apparently. So. Um, that's really, really cool. That- I'm going to show you the power of flesh. Yeah. Or the power of squirrel. <laughs> I want to hear those conversations. Oh, yeah. That would have been great. That makes me really happy that yeah. they all were like, again, like here's, you know, two amazing, talented actors, you know, and they could have very easily been like, oh, who is this newcomer? He's just a meathead, blah, 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 or whatever. But no, they were like, oh, let's all, it's a collaborative process. Let's all work together. That's let's, really cool. Let's mm-hmm. bro down yeah. and like, oh, get an, that's, that makes me so happy. I understand Schwarzenegger and uh, his bro hung out a lot during the filming and before. Subitai? Subitai. Subitai. Uh, yeah. Jerry yeah. Lopez? Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah, they hung out a lot. And there was actually, um, they went through a lot of vodka, apparently, in this movie. <laughs> huh. And the reason why was because in all the fake blood came in the form of a concentrate, uh, which had to be mixed with water prior to use. But because it was so cold in a lot of the areas that they were filming, they had to use vodka as an antifreeze for it. <laughs> oh, no. So in the scenes where the actors are supposed to be, like, spitting blood out, they would actually drink the blood because it's just red vodka at that point. So they uh, they had to go back to the special effects people and get more vodka. Apparently, they went through <laughs> several cases of vodka during the shooting of this of this movie. Just in like, oh wait, I don't have enough mo- any more blood. I got to spit. I got to get out. another hit of that. You know, I'm sure they went through even more just at the end of the night, taking another bottle and going back. But uh, yeah, had I known this ahead of time, I would have made us all themed cocktails. Ah. I would have given us some some red, some bloody the blood of our enemies, martinis or nice. some shit. Nice, <laughs> nice. But the the movie that we watched was never. It wasn't originally supposed to be this movie. In fact, um, Oliver Stone was the original. Like I saw writer. his name. Yep, he's and, a co-writer. Okay. He, he was given co-writer status after after Milius went back and like pretty much wiped out his entire script he kept a few things and i'll and i'll get to what he kept but um but for the most part uh the 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 drafting of the story milius is outright called a total drug fever dream <laughs> which i'll be wow. uh, was an inspired one um stone had compete completed the draft in like early 1978 he took inspiration from howard's black colossus and a witch shall be born and it was supposed to be a four-hour 
movie, which had the heroes, they're, they're champions, they have to defend a, a princess kingdom, and instead of taking place in the distant past, Stone had said it in a post-apocalyptic future, like 10,000 years from now, where hmm. Conan leads an army uh, in a massive battle against a horde of like 15,000 mutants, like what? all running uh, towards him. What? Yeah. So I saw that cartoon. It was called Thundar. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It was it was abandoned, and uh, uh, Milius kind of rewrote the entire script using... The, the some of the books that you brought, uh, Alex, for, oh, nice. for for like um, what where the direction should go, plus a lot of the comics that Marvel did up into up into the seventies. So, but because Oliver Stone was still contractually part of it, he had to get a co write nod on it. The there were a few things that 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 were left, uh, uh, like the Tree of Woe was left in Woe. it, uh, which was pretty no. cool. <laughs> Which that is a live vulture up pecking at him. Oh, oh what? Wow. Yep, they used a live vulture to peck at Conan, uh, not Conan, at, at Schwarzenegger, and then they the, they did really good <gasps> cutscenes on it. He is Conan uh, exactly? He is. They did a really good cutscene on it. So when he actually bites the vulture at that point, that was a dead vulture that they put <laughs> in. It wasn't a fake one. What? It well, was that's dead. commitment. So after he was done chewing and coughing on it. They had to sanitize his mouth and they had to do this. They actually had to do that scene like four times to get it done right. So Schwarzenegger is chomping on a on a dead vulture at that scene right on the neck. What the fuck? <laughs> hey, you know, black metal bands can bite chickens and stuff. So yeah. Was that Brutal. was was the actors union like not a thing at that time? <laughs> More or less. No, not really. Not well, really. Okay. Not not really. I do my own stunts. Yep. Uh, that tree actually for the for the tree of woe wasn't an actual tree, though. The film crew had created the tree out of layers of um, plaster and styrofoam and it applied it, applied it to, some, you know, just to a they basically paper mache it is what they did uh, and then mounted on a turntable so it could rotate so they could get the shadows right during the, the filming oh, of the sun. Because they're like, we're going to be out here a while doing the scene, we're assuming. So let's be able to rotate that a little bit. Oh. Uh, and then Schwarzenegger, obviously, he was not actually crucified. But uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Yeah, exactly. what? Yeah, I know. But he Hold sat on. on a bicycle seat that was mounted to the tree oh. uh, <laughs> while uh, fake nails were fixed to his wrists and feet. I mean, looked cool. Oh, yeah. It looked, it looked really, really good. Cool. I'm less impressed now. <laughs> if you're going to do it, do it right. You right. Know? Come on. He come sat in. on a bicycle seat. Come Those on. are painful. <laughs> Commit yourself <laughs> to your art, Arnie. Sure, I'll bite a dead vulture's neck, but not actually get crucified. My name's Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Now, next thing you know, they're like through somehow through some weird magic, this podcast is going to get to Schwarzenegger, I'm and then get he's going to come knock on your door oh, yeah. with like a nail and hammer and go, like, "All right, let's do this." <laughs> you try it. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are some of your favorite things out of this movie, Nathaniel? Oh dear God. Um, okay, these aren't things that I remember loving in the past. These mm-hmm. are things that I have I now love having seen it again. I loved the actual portrayal of intimacy that was shown between Conan and Valeria. I don't remember that being that strong or well done. And when, when I saw it this last time in the movie, it's like, this was well done. This was far more of an actually adult and mature, you know, not adult triple X. Yeah. Or no, mature it, was, audiences. it was tender. It was, it was, it was a tender yeah. moment. I really loved that. And I also loved the bro connection between Conan and, and the guy's name is Subutai. Subutai. Like, yeah. They were like best bros. <laughs> like His bro comes and saves them. His bro's always got his back. His bro rides off with them in the end. It's like, it was, you know, it was a big muscle, oily, totally platonic bro love. Yeah. It was great. I, I like that. Uh, why are you here? Food for wolves. <laughs> <laughs> and then they go partying and they take drugs and they steal shit oh, like, I just, yeah. so, up. they the, went to town and did a bunch of fucking drugs together and punched a camel yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, college in the background of that camel punching <laughs> scene now if you've watched the 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 made for television version this was cut out and i think in all i actually i, I think in all of them even the vhs think I, I think this was cut out I know for certain on the DVD it's in the background because I noticed it for the first time like when I got the DVD, which I think was like eight years ago, and it's on the Blu-ray. 
there is a guy in a stall in the background that's having sex with a llama. Uh, yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. just he's just sitting there. He's just bumping <laughs> into yeah. it. You can, as as Schwarzenegger, just, just as Schwarzenegger comes down the stairs, yeah. and he bumps that. into the camel and then pumps him. There's a guy. What? It's like humping a llama. What was in the interesting background. is it looked like there was like a multi person menage a llama going on. There. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> was, I can't believe you didn't notice that. I didn't notice the llama <laughs> fucking. Because <laughs> yeah. I think there was a guy behind the llama and I think there was someone underneath the llama. What? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was just milking it dry. Yeah. It's just like, hey, do something in the background so, you know, you just have to play your part. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm a llama fucker. Okay, I'm going to fuck a llama, I guess. We can only punch this camel once. We're just going to have to stick with the shot. <laughs> the camel died. And now I now I know why. When watching it on TV, there's always that horrific pan and scan because it's oh. that, that weird little, uh, I'm going to move the camera a little Do bit. Do not that show way. the llama mm, fucking. Yeah, so just to get the llama Ow. out of the way. So Something else, though? The fucking music the music oh my god i oh it's so good the music so good. basil polidorius first uh. it was the tape and then it was the cd that i had as a teen well, that cd was the first cd i ever ran into uselessness Same so i had a cd player connected to some awesome speakers in my room and i would turn it on hit it on repeat and just leave it 24 hours a day. <laughs> my nice. my senior year in high school, I had a 1989 Chevrolet Corsica. Horrible fucking car. But the previous owner had put in a really good like Sony CD system into it and put some really good speakers in the back. I mean, I I paid an atrocious amount of money for the car, you know, but it was you're in high school. And People in Phoenix, it was weird, like seeing the, the the expressions on because I'd have all the windows down and pumping out Conan the Barbarian, <laughs> like from the subwoofer, just going driving down the road, listening to Anvil of Crom, dun 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 dun, and people would stare at me like, "What the fuck are you listening to?" And I was like, "Yeah, Conan." What was your favorite part of the movie? Component or scene part, whatever. Uh, like, the general parts. atmosphere. Uh. I'm going to have lame answers since I, it's been a lot longer since I've seen it than you guys. But the things that still really stuck with me was the general atmosphere that carried on into my love of a lot of other similar styles of media. Um, I really enjoyed the music. Um, recognized it when it got sampled on a black metal concept album that I heard one time. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Um, and the camel punching. <laughs> I mean, that was just, I was young, like, like when I first saw it, that cracked me the hell up. Yeah. I thought that was comedy gold. I had forgotten it. Uh, one of the things I like to kind of follow on the coattails of the, of the music was that uh, Polidorius and Milius had worked together during the production uh, to determine the themes and the emotional tones for, for each scene. Yeah. And the the original concept for the film and its music had reportedly involved in like an opera with little or no dialogue, which is kind of what we got. Uh, Polidorius actually composed enough musical pieces to cover most of the film. Uh, it was uh, performed by a 90 piece orchestra and a 24 member choir singing mock, la mock Latin. Oh my God, did you just bring a llama? <laughs> I've been gifted. Well, I mean... Please do not defile my llama. Uh, I guess you can have it back then. <laughs> uh, the, I'm sorry I interrupted. Continue. No, it's okay. The, the usual practice in the film industry is to hire a composer, and they go, after they get the, the completed film, they go through and score the scenes. Like, oh, hey, this will sound good here. I'm going to write this. This is a tender piece. Let me do this here. But Basil Polidorius... He was hired instead uh, before the filming actually even started and was able to compose the film's music based on the just the initial storyboards that he was given. Oh, wow. So all of that music that he wrote was off of nothing but but the the storyboards. He like I, I was all in his head just from storyboards, which I thought was pretty damn cool. Yeah, that sounds pretty awesome. Yes. And I had interrupted you. So go oh, ahead. Oh, no, that's fine. I had to use this time to think about what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I this was a much better movie than I really remembered. And I again, I realized I think I'd only seen the edited for time and content TV, TBS version. Oh, yeah. You know, whatever it was, it played on repeat on TBS in like 1988 or something. 
TBS. I, I, I think it was, no, it must I, have been I probably TBS. Very likely. Yeah. I think TBS. So uh, when Subutai and Conan come down the stairs and they're they're high off of the sti- the black stygian. Yeah. Um, in the you know in the in the film version, you know, there's the woman that like you know, hey, you know, would you like to see you know death or whatever? And, <laughs> what and he's all there, whores and sluts. <laughs> yeah, uh, sluts. Yeah, like damn. I, 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 th- I think the TV version is like you know little girls and dames or something like oh, that. Which is, I think every station Monday through Friday. Snakes on no, the it's, I've, had it, I've had it with these monkey fighting snakes <laughs> on this Monday to Friday plane. Yeah. I think every every local station had someone overdub it to where something not offensive to yeah. you know, horse and sluts. But uh, I just... <laughs> horse and sluts and llama fucking. Oh dear. Well, they were high on stygian, black they were, stygian. They were really high. Yes, yeah. that doesn't excuse their behavior. Okay, <laughs> I. So I, the whole movie kind of start to finish was, it's a beautiful film. There's, you know, lovely, just lovely scenes and, you know, the, the lighting and the music and the costumes and just the, the expressions on people's faces, you know, like Conan's mom didn't have to say a single word. Oh my God. She was was, that damn scene. Oh, she she was also mesmerizing yeah She's, her face and everything about uh, that moment just, was just intense yeah well she 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 really well, she couldn't at least nothing we'd understand she couldn't speak english really no. yeah, oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> german She's very uh, east, yeah. east german wow. yeah yeah gorgeous 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 oh and yeah very much so like the acting that came from the little boy who played little conan you know just like as he watches his hand as his mother dies and just that slow oh gosh the whole oh it was amazing but just yeah start to finish beautiful Beautiful filming, beautiful landscapes, amazing sets, amazing costumes. Just this movie looked like a logistical nightmare and they (laughs) pulled it off. I don't know how much cocaine they all had to do, but holy shit. A lot. A lot. A lot of (laughs) cocaine, a a lot lot of vodka. Um, Yeah, just an amazing movie. And if you haven't seen it in years or if you've never seen the actual theatrical release of this movie, you really need to see it. I did notice one interesting thing was as a side note when we were watching it the other night is that when young Conan is first brought and chained up to that fucking thing, the, the wheel, the wheel of this, pain, there's this uh, kid sitting on top of it who slaps his hand and chains mm-hmm. him up. And it's a kid with red hair and a black feather cloak. And then as time goes by, mm-hmm. a guy with red hair and a black feather cloak is the one who then takes him and turns him into gladiator. And then finally, eventually, in the middle of the night, sets him free. It sets him free, yep. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, now, it was a very subtle yeah. little moment there. Yeah. Now, the following scene from that is where, when Conan is running across the plains and the dogs are running after him. Yeah. If yeah. it looks like Schwarzenegger is frightened, he actually oh, was. No. The dogs had bit the trainers multiple times. They were very mean. So Schwarzenegger was literally running for his life because for some reason they got really, really mean. And when he went into the Atlantean chamber, he actually um, uh, not broke, but sprained his back on that tumble because he went up in fear of, of the dogs actually catching him oh, God. and then falling down. So that him hearing him go, hey, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. That's much better than I can. <laughs> uh, that, is, that is actually him grunting and groaning because he is in abject pain. They had to cut and stop huh? filming for a few days because he had sprained. He had sprained himself. Well, Conan got revenge on those dogs because he comes out holding a sword and looks at them. And the very next scene is him walking into this little town wearing a new fur. A new club. fur. And I think he was <laughs> gnawing on a, on a leg bone. Hmm. Yes. Now, uh, that, they're the, my two favorite scenes out of the movie. Uh, actually, I have three. Uh, the opening sequence where his father's sword is being made. Oh, that, that whole scene, thing uh, is amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's dark and. There's a technical reason why it was dark. The original um, director of photography, the camera that he had, it was set down a couple, so it was not exposed properly. Mm. So during the dallies, after they saw the first set of dallies, which is that sequence, they fired him. You're you're gone. Um, but so it's a little darker than it should be. Uh, the next scene, that, uh, another favorite scene is finding the Atlantean sword uh, in that tomb where he where he finds mm. it on the in the in the throne. 
and then the uh, final battle with with Tulsa Doom. That whole uh, where he, his speech to Crom. If you don't, if you don't listen to me, then to hell with you. To hell with you. <laughs> <laughs> those oh, are my. Th- a- those are big, big scene, big pivotal points in the movie. But they are my three favorite scenes out of that entire movie. That battle was really cool in like where Valeria comes back as a Valkyrie and utters her catchphrase. Yes. And inspires him to like, you know, I actually I am pretty fucking cool mm-hmm. and I'm going to kick this guy's ass. I think one of my other favorite scenes was right before again. Oh, by the way, spoilers. If you've not seen this movie <laughs> before, uh, spoilers. We usually say that earlier. Yeah, I think Matthew thing. normally says that, Matthew, but it's we'll a given. Splice, we'll, Fucking Conan. We'll yeah. splice him in <laughs> it's from 1982. Yeah, yeah. 1982. The Titanic sinks. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, right before he kills Thulsa Doom, and Thulsa Doom just like, when he when Conan sneaks up behind him and Thulsa Doom just doesn't even really act surprised. He just turns around and looks at him and it's like gives that whole speech about my son. Because mm-hmm. who are you if you're not my son? Yeah. I made you. And he gives this whole this whole speech and like Conan like kind of loses himself for like a split second. That charm. And what I love about Thulsa Doom is just his pure arrogance that he is right and good and just and correct. And doesn't even, like, he looks a little surprised when he chops him in the neck. But, like, up until that moment, he's just not even shocked. He's like, of course you're here. Like, of course you snuck in and got to me. Like, I'm not even shocked, you know. that I don't know. That whole, all of the character building, and that's, I don't think it's usually done in a lot of movies where the bad guy gets his own character development. Usually, no. And, and unless it's just like, you know, mustache twisting, like, oh, I'm evil because it's fun to be evil and fuck you. Mwah, ha, ha, ha. And there's no character development. And even though Thulsa Doom just start to finish is is just a crazy weirdo cult leader motherfucker. He still is given that opportunity to kind of build build his character. And it's it's really amazing. Yeah, because he even says you know, it, you know, I'm the one that gave you, gave you the strength and, and, yes. and, and it's, and it's, it's very, it's shown, uh, just before he's, that Conan's crucified, how much power he has over a person because all those women that are like in the Canyon above him. And he's like, you know, come to me, come to me, my child. And she just jumps off the ledge yep. and kills herself. Like I'm doing this from, for, for, for my man, mm-hmm. for the guy that I'm in love with. That's even a though, very powerful moment. Yes, it and, is. And basically kind of I'm going to lose a lot of listeners here, but I don't care. Like basically in that moment, it shows me the folly of like most dogmas of I can get that. You know, we can cut that later. But just like <laughs> just like blindly following religion is like or anything really blindly yeah. following any authority yeah. figure. We tend to not be very politically correct with some of our that's opinions. fair yeah so. there are that's some things fair. that we that we won't go into but <laughs> like i said yeah. you, you're matthew yeah. tonight yeah oh, you're matthew tonight. Right. i'm feeling i'm feeling assholes tonight that's but, right yeah <laughs> wait what wait, mama okay. hide but it you know that goes into that goes into even even <clears throat> king osric's which i I've, I've been wanting to get to osric here for a minute now oh, uh yes. osric's daughter who they you know that's the the whole thing is them going out to find his his daughter I think Max von Sydow, give, even though it's such a short part, gives an amazing character in that that brief moment. Mm-hmm. Um, in 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 the speech that he gives, that it, it it is one of my favorite lines where he says, "You know, at some point, thief the 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 gold loses its luster, uh, and the, all that's left is a is a is a daughter's love for her father." That's a very like poignant moment. He knows. His time is not long on this earth, and he just wants to be with his daughter instead of instead of fighting everybody. But Max von Sydow, I he's one of my favorite actors. You know, from from Dreamscape to Conan to solid. to even even in yeah. the newest one of the newest Star Wars movies, he is a solid actor. Like he took he owned every moment of his scene. Like I, I just love that they're bringing these prisoners in front of the king. And you'd certainly expect the king to be like, well, I'm going to kill him now. And he's like, <laughs> he just welcomes them. Yeah. Like, I he's hate like, those yeah, he goes, he, he goes, yeah, he, he, <laughs> you come into my city, you steal. And then, yeah, and he stands. He's yeah. like, and for this, I salute you. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, You're the perfect thieves. You're just what I need. And even Conan's like, 
I didn't expect uh, that. I thought we were. <laughs> <laughs> but that dagger he pulled out is that that the the, cool. the, 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 yeah. the fangs of the serpent that was pretty cool. Yeah. You got to admit, in the Conan books, there are some really cool named weapons. Yeah. There really are, but that also well, the, that yeah. sword, the the snake arrows. Oh my god! Oh, those are fucked up. <laughs> yeah, cool. I mean, if you really want to fuck someone up, you shoot them with a snake. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit, though, when the the the, the, the scene where where Conan is going up to burn the the funeral pyre, Ooh. even to this day, I will still get a a wet a wet eye for that a, a teary eye. That is. That is a moment it like pulls on my heartstrings and and then the the whole uh line that Supatai says between yeah. Supatai and yeah. Mako is like, why why do you cry? Because he's Conan, he will not cry. I'm just like yeah. <gasps> No, it's just what what has stuck in my brain since I was a small child and saw this movie for the first time was when Valeria 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 yeah. is dying and she's saying how cold she is and keep me warm and that's like the last thing she said yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. oh it's so awful and then the revenge look just the look back to the mountain with the eyes i would fuck you up oh and then <laughs> and then going in and it's cool because Milius said that everyone was wondering well how do we how much debauchery do you want and Milius basically said y'all have read history books about what went on during roman orgies and everything and everyone went yeah go do, do that. that okay and then they added in soup with human you know pieces well just it was Ugh. just hands they just can't pull out these human i remember this he the uncut <laughs> version is there's there's heads in there too heads and feet and, and, I, and I remember seeing the hands in there the big fat gimp but yeah i remember <laughs> so he pours it into one of their bowls and this girl walks away and she just takes this yep. hand and she just starts munching on a finger of like, <laughs> like you didn't even cook that or anything <laughs> like, yeah. come on, it's just, all casual like <laughs> mm-hmm. crunch <laughs> uh, probably real hands too if they used a goddamn real vulture those dirty <laughs> bastards method actors am i right exactly <laughs> Ugh. exactly alex as a fan of the series of books what are your thoughts on the movie as how it relates to it and how it uh, uh, illustrates the novels that you remember? What it captures is the, not the aesthetic so much as the the atmosphere. You know, I'm, I'm big on atmosphere and it just really, it engross, it engrosses you. Yeah. Like if you, if you're reading the books that it's very descriptive, it uses very powerful language and that sort of um, connection is found in the movies or in the first movie at the very least. So it's um, like there's the fact that he doesn't talk as much. He still comes across as a brooding, melancholy warrior, especially as events progress towards the end. It's really like it's a bit of an origin story. It's setting up to where like in the books that is Conan evolves to a warrior, becomes a buccaneer at one point. Mm -hmm. He becomes a king. He has a son. He has a wife. There's a whole deep, rich lord of the Conan universe and the movie, in a sense, at least for me, is a bit of just like hey, it's the beginning of Conan. You could have called you could have called it that. Did you see the 2011 version? I have not. Not the one with Aquaman. No. Yeah, <laughs> well, it at least goes into more of him as a he. He does more of the conversation, more of the personality. Yeah, more of the quips. Because I know you were just saying that you had played the video game, the Xbox game. Oh yeah. And he wisecracks like he's got lines oh, yeah. all throughout that game that if you had only seen the movie, you'd be like, I don't really know what is what is this Conan. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's very it's very concrete. And just, yeah. you know, everyone's a damn dog or a dirty dog or a scurvy dog, scurvy mm-hmm. dog, miserable dog, <laughs> filthy, <laughs> miserable cur. <laughs> Curse, yeah. yeah. Uh, I will bring us back to probably one of your favorite movies, Nathaniel, or at least in the, in the genre that you really like. The final battle against the Lost of Doom's men, that was entirely, entirely inspired by 1954 Seven Samurai movie. Oh, yeah. I was thinking oh, that yeah. the whole time. Because mm-hmm. oh, wow. the way that they staked everything out, set the weapons around so that they would be in control of the battlefield with only two of them versus a horde. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But not just... Also, Poppy had note had made a note that when we were watching it, you said that this movie was almost a almost spaghetti a spaghetti western. western. Yeah. yeah, really, it's oh. it's got so much of the you know that Italian 
good, the bad, and the ugly, sort of the wide shots mm-hmm. and the long scenes, and it's filmed in fucking Italy. I think it's filmed <laughs> in the same goddamn place. Uh, uh, yeah, a lot of it was, I think, and filmed in Spain, too. At first, I thought it was being filmed in Mongolia. It looked so much like where poor Ch- Charlie and you in a like, in long way around, long way yeah. around, like Road of Bones kind of action. But it turns out it was Central Italy, and it looked very, it, it had that feel of that very long, drawn out going to tell this whole epic warrior's hero's journey tale and it's not all going to be sunshine and roses there's going to be some real dark shit that happens all you have to do is replace the swords with guns put conan in a duster okay i can see that change the snake cult to like a strange fundamentalist uh Mo- a snake cult. Just keep it a snake <laughs> cult. One of those charismatic play with snake cults. You, you have a western. I yeah. can see that. I I totally can see that. Wait, who are the snake? I'd people? watch that. The snake cult in the movie no. versus the religious snake who are the, cult. Who are the people who talk in tongues and play with snakes? Um, uh, oh, charismatic. I, I believe. think that's I think is that Southern Baptist. No, no, no it's not Southern it's Baptist. Charismatic or I think it's, it's charismatic. Um, it's not very charismatic. <laughs> the, I could be wrong, but I think I, I think if a church that's, is charismatic, they have the force personality to control snakes. Okay. But that I could be wrong. Who am yes, I thinking of? <laughs> who are the people who talk in t- uh, tent revivals? Oh, Holy Rollers is what we call I don't them. <laughs> yeah, that's Sorry. super cool dudes. Cut, this just cut this whole thing. Mutants. Steve Martin did a movie about that called Keeping the Faith. Um, so we, I mentioned that Steve, uh, John Milius had, had directed this, and you made comment about the, the wide shots that mm-hmm. looked really good. He, I don't know if anyone else at this table has seen uh, some of his movies, uh, Flight of the Intruder, which is based off of a book. Flight uh, of the Navigator? No, it's a no, war movie, intruder. right? Yeah, oh, it's a war yeah. movie. It's intruder. about the about the the jets, the intruder over during during uh, Vietnam. Uh, Farewell to the King, Red mm. Dawn, yeah. the the nineteen eight, not the new version, the the, the good the, one, yeah, the one Patrick Swayze, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and then the Lion in, in the Wind. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not, the the Wind in the Lion. No, no, the, of those, the only ones I've seen, I know I've. S- the intruder i know i've seen that i just don't remember much about it but definitely red, red dawn. dawn i mean and then <laughs> and then yeah. newly being a screenwriter he also wrote red dawn clear and present danger farewell of the king uh uncredited on dirty harry and he also was a screenwriter for apocalypse now so okay. he has some like Dang. chops to him so yeah yeah this very much was a similar to you know seven samurai or those kind of kurosawa films in length and narrative and character building and even like archetype characters in some in some respects oh i was pointing out to you when we're watching it that conan's fighting style was a merge of both western and eastern styles yes oh interesting it was very interesting he is swinging a broadsword but swinging a broadsword using eastern fighting style well, there is that scene where the, yeah. the sword master yeah. uh, is teaching him. The actual sword master, I'm going to butcher this. I know I'm going to, so I apologize in advance. Uh, Kiyoshi Yamasaki. That sounds very good. That sounded very, really good. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, I, I practiced that, actually. Uh, he was the, the the sword master on set to make sure that all the, the movements were correct. So he, And he, Schwarzenegger liked him so much. They put him in the movie? Put him in the movie. So, <laughs> nice. So when he, you know, when oh, he does wow. the scene where he puts a sword out and he gets slapped and then he turns around and kicks the other guy, that's the actual sword master for the movie. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, which I, I really thought was cool. And they made um, four swords for his father's sword Mm -hmm. and then they made four swords of the atlantean sword uh one was actually apparently like 75 pounds and that was used in the close-up scenes so schwarzenegger is lifting 75 pounds of a sword in one his bicep is that fucking big so yeah yeah, oh and those thighs oh but he he kept he kept (laughs) that he kept the atlantean one of the one of the props for the atlantean sword it was in his office as the governor oh hell yeah oh hell yeah i've seen videos on youtube of him showing it to people (laughs) as governor of california (laughs) Uh, yeah this is this is he he has gone on record saying this is one of his favorite movies to do so i'm pretty sure um, he's even used the the what is good in life phrase as the governor i i think he has a few times i mean wouldn't you (laughs) wait was it a was it a broad sword or was it a bastard sword or are those the same? I thing? think that that I think the Atlantean sword I think was was a two handed sword. I think it was a straight up two handed broadsword. Yeah. I don't know. He yeah. frequently used it one handed. But yeah, I know. You know he used it one handed. Yeah, yeah. 
When I was taking a broadsword <laughs> class, I had to use fucking two hands on one-handed swords. Because I had to use two hands and a foot to hold that. Up. <laughs> yeah, they love to give me this this sword called Bertha. <laughs> because I'd swing her around my head and I would hit the ground with it. Anyway, he he actually had to. They were worried for a while uh, about his body size because he couldn't hold the sword properly because his arms and oh, chest his were so big. Chest he was so gigantic. He couldn't like hold him at, hold it out straight. So as someone with tits, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but one one other thing that I think that that you would like, Nathaniel. Um, the whole sequence where the painting of symbols on Conan's body to bring him uh, back to life. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, those swarm of ghosts, uh, they didn't, they didn't come from any of the Conan stories. Those actually were inspired by a Japanese horror film called, and I'm probably going to butcher this, uh, Kwai Don. Kwai Don. Uh, 19, yes. 1964. I have that on my media server. Um, yeah. so yeah, it was, uh, mainly taken from Hoichi the Earless. Um, the traditional tale about a blind musician who is asked to entertain ghosts. That's where the director got the idea for that sequence and put that into the Conan movie. I and thought, I, I thought I you really would appreciate loved it. That God, I can talk so much more about that. Specifically, like Miko uh, being oh. You yes. know, pouring Nico, out. Oh, yeah. Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Iroh. Iroh. <laughs> Uncle Iroh <laughs> believes in you. Uncle Iroh the wizard believed in Conan. Uh, but I do. Uh, we're we're running way over time here, but I do want to make we a note expected with this that, movie though yeah, that scene of the way that they painted things and they had to fight off the spirits is ever since I resaw this movie in my twenties, I decided that in every role playing game that I run where there's a raised dead spell, mm-hmm. you have to do that. Nice, like you don't yeah. you don't just cast the spell and they come back to life. No, you cast the spell. You have to do that to the body. You have to leave them overnight, and you have to do a full fight scene against evil spirits that are coming to take your. Uh, to in, to possess the body of your friend, oh, yeah. so you need I to like fight that. off the spirit, so your friend's spirit can make it back to the body. Mm, I like nice. that. Yeah. And well I do that done. every fucking game I do now. Thank you, Conan. Mm-hmm. Any last words on the movie, guys? The special effects were pretty damn good for the time. You're good. Yeah. No, I have. I, I mean, I have. Oh, I have like six more pages of material that I mind. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, we are very long in the. T- oh, one other, a couple other things, real quick. Um, cause we always do talk about this. We talk about the budget for the movie and, and I didn't get to go into that. Um, so the budget was estimated at 20 million when Did this movie was in. Oh, wow. Uh, that would have been 52 million today. Uh, the opening U.S. weekend was 9.6 million, which would have been 24 and a half today. Uh. The gross USA, it did make it back. It made 39 and a half million, okay. which would have made it a hundred million dollar movie today. But the worldwide gross fell short of the U.S. gross at coming in at only twenty nine million. I know, so it 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 definitely has made more on DVD sales and and streaming now, and well, not streaming, but pay streaming, and in in rentals. But when this was technically a flop for the movie theaters, hmm. I I could kind of see that it's it's kind of a uh, thinking man's sword and sorcery movie it's a slow burn it, it's a it really slow is burn and it's a lot again like we've said multiple times so far it's a lot deeper than any of us remember mm-hmm. so if you're going in expecting just fighting and blood and guts like and beast master like beast master <laughs> shit like no this movie is is deep it's complex it's got great characters and it does have amazing fight scenes as well but it's also a damn good film any last words alex i love the weight to his uh, swings. Like he's just got that. I was why remembering the, when he had an ax, just, he can see even with his size, it's like, you just got to imagine the power behind the weapon that he's wielding and the destruction he can do with it. It's just, it's so damn badass. He could crush me with his love and <laughs> any day. Nice. <laughs> All right. So how many Atlantean swords do you give this? Oh man, Atlantean swords. Uh, Oh God. You know what? I'm going to give this movie, uh, Okay, this is tough because it's an older movie and it, it we have different production standards, but for its time and for what it has done to revitalize at the time sword mm. and sorcery. Like yeah. it it was I think the top sword and sorcery film until like Lord of the Rings or something I like that. I think so, yeah. yeah. I will say I will give it 10 out of 10 camel punches. 
Because <laughs> 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 Iranian works. swords are cool, but that motherfucker punched at Campbell. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, Poppy, Atlantean swords. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm. Or do you want to go with llama fucking? Or do you want to go know, with camel okay, punches? I do not support bestiality. <laughs> uh, I really like llamas, so please don't rape llamas. Uh, I will give this ten out of ten. James Earl Jones's voice is. Nice. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Just, just ten out of ten. James Earl Jones. All right. Alex? So I was going to say 10 out of 10 Tulsa Dooms, but nah. instead, now I got a better idea, 10 Allahs out of 10 Allahs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will give it 10 out of 10 Atlantean Swords. Yeah, it's Conan, man. Yeah. Like, how can we give Conan. it less? Yeah. It's, it's a fantastic film. Yes. All right, let's take this to the gaming table. All right, we'll be right back. Hi, everyone. This is your favorite host, Matthew. This week's episode is brought to you by Guardian Games, who we are proud to have as our sponsor. Guardian Games is Portland's largest gaming store. They have almost every game you can think of, be it role-playing, board game, card games, miniature games, even video games. They also have a ton of gaming-related material and some pretty neat swag. I mean, the D20 fuzzy dice that go in your mirror, that's good stuff. If, you, uh, <laughs> if you're 21, uh, you can have a drink in the back at the Critical Sip. Booze makes gaming better. Always has, always will. There's free games back there. You'll love it. Uh, they also have a friendly and incredibly knowledgeable staff, and they are the hub of a diverse and friendly gaming community. Um, if you're in Portland, you definitely want to go to Guardian Games. And bringing this to the gaming table, Dusty, tell us a little bit about these characters. Yes. Well, there are only really three player characters in this movie. Everyone else is an NPC, but we will go through most of them. But firstly, we have Arnold Schwarzenegger playing the title role of Conan the Barbarian. If you don't know other movies that Conan, uh, that Arnold Schwarzenegger has been in. Where have you been living? Yes, this is very true. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so he plays Conan the Barbarian. Uh, I really don't know where I would he, put him on the spectrum. What, where, where to land him on alignment? I, I would like say neutral, chaotic neutral. Yeah, yeah, that's about where I would put him. I wouldn't put him as lawful good. Obviously, I wouldn't put him in any of the any of the evil realms. So he's a man of honor, very mm. much so. Very true. Yeah, I would say chaotic good. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. Chaotic good's the good old standby. I have a hard time painting him as chaotic neutral because he's not shifty. Like, uh, sure, he, he he's not lawful, clearly, but that's why it's chaotic. I do, I, uh, he seems, for the most part, to be kind of a good dude. Just. I mean, he does decide to save the guy's daughter instead of take the money and run. Yeah. I mean, of course, it did serve his own purpose of revenge, but I don't know. Valeria gave a very rousing speech, and he still was like, nah, babe, I got to do the yeah. right thing. Yeah. That's a mm -hmm. good point. All right. And then we have uh, Jerry Lopez, who played Supatai. Chaotic good. Very yeah. Much so. Yeah, very much so. He was he was a bro. Yeah. He was, and he was there for his bro. He was a surfer bro. He was a surfer bro. <laughs> <laughs> With a killer bow and arrow. He was, yeah, he was solid. Yeah. He, he was on point. He was a good wingman. Uh, and then we have Sandal Bergman, who played Valeria. Now, I, I would I would go back to neutral with her. I would go back to chaotic neutral. She has a lot of growth throughout the film. Oddly enough, yeah. Oddly enough. Uh, maybe starts out as chaotic. Neutral. Neutral, and then kind of becomes more chaotic good. Maybe. Hmm? Yeah. Well, she, she, she. Well, maybe I'll backtrack a little bit because she did want to go to, to Valhalla. She wanted to make sure she could get into Valhalla. Mm. And she did. Yeah. Uh, she yeah. was good enough. Yeah. So I, I will backpedal on that one a little bit. But I will agree with you. She had a, had a much, had a much, she had a deep arc of growing mm -hmm. in the movie. So, all right. Yeah, I will say chaotic good. Yeah, I can, it, I'll backpedal. At least for, yeah, for the, for the, uh, encompassing the whole performance, chaotic good. 
Uh, but yeah, growth. All mm-hmm. these characters display a surprising amount of growth in the short time mm-hmm. that we spend with them. Warrior, thief, yeah. thief. Uh, well, Conan is a thief too. <laughs> he is, but yeah. he's also a lawyer. Yeah. He wears many different hats. He does wear many <laughs> that, that, that one That one line, you too big to be a thief. <laughs> <laughs> he's not wrong. Uh, yeah. You going to climb that tower though? <laughs> yeah, I'm not. With no rope? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that was great. Yeah. Uh, and did then, they not have rope? No, no, no. The, the, no, Supatai and, and Valeria did. He was climbing hand grip up the side oh, of, the, really? of the tower. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Because uh, apparently he had a crush on Valeria at that point. He wanted to show just how much of a badass he was. Well and done, Ernie. <laughs> well done. <laughs> then Yo. we go into the NPCs, uh, and we can run down the alignments if you want, but we have James Earl Jones. Um, Lawful evil for as yeah. to doom. I think these are all pretty. Other than King Osric, which is hmm. played by Max von Sydo, um, and then we have uh, Mako uh, playing the Wizard of the Mounds. That was his actual name, was just Wizard of the Mounds. And then we have Conan's father. Two of my other favorites, though, uh, Sven O. Thorson, who played Thorgrim, and then. Um, Where's he's? I don't have him. Those two guys, I don't Rexor. Think, oh, Rexor. and then Rexor. Ben do you Davidson. Ever hear was, their names? Well, Ben Davidson was a football player. Yeah, back. no, but do you ever hear the character's actual name? Just names? Rexor uh, and Rexor. Then the other guy you hear once yeah. when he says he was beside himself yeah. with grief when you Re- killed yeah. my snake. Yeah, Rexor is beside himself. No, it was the other the other dude and with dude with bad haircuts. Thorgrim. Yeah, Thorgrim. They Thorgrim. both had bad hair growth. Yeah. Oh, here's one thing I did have a complaint about. They looked exactly the same 20 years later. You well, know? that's like, when you're in a cult, you know? No, I mean, they looked exactly what? the same. Ball same cuts. haircut, same yeah. outfit, same style, no sign of age. They didn't age any of the characters over the years. I, I think Thulsa yeah. Doom probably granted them, like, longer life at that point. And permanent bad because haircuts. Wizards yeah. did it. <laughs> yeah, Wizards. Yeah. Wizards, goddamn all, wizards! All, I mean, all, all the virgins that they they sacrificed. When you bathe in the blood of virgins, why do you think I look so young? No, well, why do I, you think I, I look so young? I bathe in the blood of virgins every day. Maybe, there you go. I mean, obviously, See, I just go the, the the less expensive and less messy route. I just have transfusions. Oh. Yeah, I just put a line right in and just go. Yeah, well, oh. it's, hmm. it's 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 less expensive. Virgin it's, blood dialysis, fascinating. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you should try it sometime. Huh? You don't. You don't have to get messy. Things don't get in your teeth. You just. Well, I could use a hookup. Let me know if you're a blood <laughs> and, uh I don't oh, think my yeah. HMO covers that, but I'll check yeah. it out. No HMO covers that. Yeah. Just go and do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is going down a dark road, real quick. All right. Anyway. Uh, and then you have Cassandra Gava, who played the witch. That was a fucked up scene. Oh, oh that's so good. Right. Right. I know. It was so just, good. <laughs> just don't like put yourself in this situation. Hey, hey, you want to come to my? Yeah, you know it's pretty cold out here. Yeah, I'll, I'll come with and, and what were the words that she used? To, like, oh, and enjoy the bounty of my hearth or something. Yeah, like, um, <laughs> yeah, lady. Uh, it is pretty cold, so sure. What? It's like what? Whoa, whoa, girl, Why girl, girl, are you crawling girl. all over the ground? Yeah. There's plenty of room for you to and stand then throw, up. Throwing uh, the 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 the, the spell casting <laughs> materials into the fire. <sighs> yeah, I like how at the end he's just like, okay, you crazy, and <laughs> just throws, throws her, her into, into the fire. fire. <laughs> <laughs> Dunzo. I don't understand though. He <laughs> walks out of her place and Supatai is like chained up to the rock wall, yep. like 10 feet away. And he says, I've been here for days. Didn't he notice him when he went into I think he was very Homegirl's f- place. focused on hot lady, like, <laughs> come yeah. sit by my fire. All right. <laughs> He's not he, seeing, he failed the, the observation He's not that seeing, point. like, little surfer Hawaiian dude, like, chain to the rock. No, he is seeing hot lady witch with the, the, uh, the warm, uh, the warm hearth, hearth or whatever, you know. <laughs> what we didn't hear. Oh, yeah. What about when she goes screaming through the night? There were no comments on that. What we didn't hear was that implied conversation when he steps out and they make eye contact. Mm-hmm. And you can clear, you know, this is just in my head. But I bet Subutai <laughs> was just like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> I love Conan, like you know, he basically like after he throws her shit in the fire, and her little weirdo spirit like goes bouncing around over the uh, the horizon or whatever. He's basically just like, 
Well, so that happened. <laughs> and he's just okay. like, I'm going to get me a good night's sleep. But- I'm going to have me a nice meal. <laughs> I'm going to wake up. I'm stretching. He off. goes back Pretty inside. Goes back inside. <laughs> Every <laughs> single gamer, though, would have looted the fuck out of that place. Oh, absolutely. Though. If Aww. we were playing Kone, we walked out with a backpack. Our encumbrance would have been completely filled at that point. Like, I got everything. I got food for days. I have everything. You step out and that dude's like, hey, man, can you help me out? And then you have to look at your character sheet. And remember what your alignment is. <laughs> How many iron you might, rations do you I might have? Be like, nah, sorry, bro. These, these mm. rations are mad. <laughs> Better off without you. <laughs> but then you could be like, oh, shit, my party needs an archer. And you've got a bow and arrow sitting there next to you for some reason, even though you're chained up and supposed to be eaten by wolves. Okay. <laughs> cool. Come with me, bro. Come I, on. I did like one of their first conversations when Subutai was kind of like putting the smack down on, on about his God versus Conan's oh, God. Oh, that was a great conversation. He's like, my God lives above you. You, yours is below ground. Ha ha ha. And then they eat chicken. Like, yeah. <laughs> but you see, you see Conan like yeah. contemplate that for a second. Yes, he He's does. Like, Hmm. Like I, I, in my head, there's an extended scene where he just reaches out and slaps him because he does give that look like I'm going to hurt you. I'm really going to hurt you because I never thought about that. Like, fuck. I didn't need these thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> it's my brain. And then we have Osric's daughter, young Conan, and then Conan's mother to round down. They were all NPCs. All NPCs. So. Yeah. Well, you know, Osric's daughter had an interesting growth arc, too, where she's all like, He's mine. He's going to fuck you up. You're so dead. You're so dead. He's going to get you. He, You know it. And they chain her like, shut up. Chain her up to a rock. His dudes come in. They fuck them up. Oh, yeah. Two guys against an entire, like, small legion of, of dudes. And Tulsa Doom's standing up there. He's like, nope. I'm out. <laughs> and he's leaving and he takes an arrow and shoots it at her and she's and, screaming at him and like super bro comes up and blocks the arrow and at that point she realizes and that dude was bad news okay i'm cool now and then she helps conan infiltrate the the enemy base at the end i mean even that like it's kind of that that kind of happens off screen you don't yeah. really you don't mm-hmm. really see the conversation that led between them ending the battle and them infiltrating the place but it was kind of cool like her walking through with the snake like mm-hmm. distracting people while conan just fucked him up yeah <laughs> <laughs> like yes there, there's there's a little bit of like off camera in my head that because uh, Supatai saved her, like they went off and got married and, and like that was now, um, you know, Prince Supatai of King Osric's realm. Aww. Could have been. That would be cute. they don't really mention Subatai in the second movie. No, yeah, no, because yeah. you got that other weird thief the guy. guy. Eats the gems. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Following up on this movie then, uh, one thing that we always kind of do that Matthew usually leads in is where do we go from here? We're going to, if this is a campaign and we have just finished the first adventure, where does the next adventure take us? Because Mako, the wizard says they have many more adventures. Oh, absolutely. So I'd like to think they hire a caravan. They get a little bit lazy about it. Like, all right, let's head on over to the next, uh, let's head on over to the next city, see what uh, spoils and adventures await. All on the way, they get attacked by rebels or bandits. And while uh, Conan could easily handle it and his buddy, they maybe they're pissed drunk. And uh, they wake up in chains on a boat. Suddenly, you're on the water. Oh, shit. Suddenly, you're attacked by another boat. And you get freed in the meantime, and you meet up with some uh, lady who's like, Oh, my dad got killed, and I need to get these gems. And they're going to goddamn reclaim my countryside. <laughs> Conan's like, well, that sounds good to me. I'm Conan got Shanghai. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, awesome. But, but he's just basically like, well, I this sounds like it works for me, so I'm going to, like, tally-ho because I get to kill some dudes and maybe reap some benefits <laughs> afterwards. I definitely, I definitely am feeling the sort of, like, Conan the Barbarian meets Leverage, <laughs> where every, like, every episode is is Conan going to the next town and they're like, we need help against this evil foe or whatever it may be. And it becomes sort of competence porn for a while. (laughs) I I definitely, I definitely, I feel that. Well, if you need ideas, there was a cartoon. What? A Conan cartoon in the 90s. I I did not know this. I don't know that either. It was Conan versus snake people, basically. The Stygians 
We're all snake people. Yep, it was Conan the Adventurer. It's like oh. making a Highlander cartoon. Like, oh yeah, we got this movie where the whole thing is cutting yeah. off heads. Let's make a kids cartoon about it. Can't it's actually a really violent cartoon. Is it really? Yeah, uh, ah. I imagine so. Yeah, that, 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 that's one of the images of Conan from it. Oh, wait, I gotta see all this right. one. Actually, that's 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 some fair. His hair's a little too like uh, oh, wavy. Oh yeah, yeah, the bird friend because they all have bird friends. I feel so, like they're wussing yeah. out when they don't have the bowl cut. I will say that if we're gonna talk cartoons, though, the cartoons. Uh, well, well, okay. We could take that whole post-apocalyptic concept that Oliver Stone was talking about. No. You, know? you mean we Thundar? Th- and we could turn it into Thundar, yeah. because that's what Thundar the Barbarian is. Thundar is a fantastic cartoon. Well, okay, it hasn't aged well. No, it has not <laughs> aged well. But as a kid, <laughs> so we're all about the same age. Yeah. Um, watching that kid, watching that show was like, you know, at eight, nine years old. It was fucking awesome, because you, you, it makes the two, you, it makes some really great things for me. It makes Conan with Star Wars, with sci-fi. Yeah. It took because everything. Because Thundar had yeah. a lightsaber. It yep. just, they changed the pommel on it a little bit. That was it. Yeah, hmm. Thundar had a light, it was it, a, a, he had a sword of, of, yeah, yeah, he had a Chewie, but he was like a big old Dargo looking mm-hmm. dude. Yeah. And he had a, what, a magic, she had psychic powers or something? Yes. Or she could turn invisible, I don't remember what, she had a power of some kind. Yeah, Thundar the Barbarian was a good one. Was it Beastmaster 2 or 3 that had the time travel? Two. I didn't know there was a two or three for oh, Beastmaster. Christ, two. Really? That's when he goes to fucking yeah, New York. It's straight up or... on no, the cover. He's like standing next to like some fancy Corvette or something. Yeah, he goes to I LA need to and see this two. now. Yeah, it's it's real bad. But I would love to see that with Conan. You just like, oh, time okay. vortex. Well, if you want another cartoon that fits more in with the story that you're talking about, Alex, that you could crib ideas from directly, Pirates of Dark Water. I've heard so much about this. Pirates of Dark Water is one of those, the world is very similar to the Conan world. It's this high adventure, things don't really make rational sense, you know, the the strong wind, the wily, you know, sail the ships. This... It's the kind of a cartoon where the main enemy has a ship so awesome it eats other ships. <laughs> wow. So that's, it does. that's hardcore. You could see something like that in a Conan game if you wanted to take it to the sea. Interesting. But for other bits of inspiration, take live action shows. We're talking Beastmaster. There was a Beastmaster TV show. Mm, that's that right. There was. I, there was. Yeah. It was yeah. bad. Yeah. <laughs> but Did that also have Kevin Sorbo? Kevin Sorbo, I believe. I can't remember. Is this in my brain? Is this Kevin? Uh, maybe it was, maybe it was poor man's Google that. Kevin Sorbo. That said, I know Kevin Sorbo wasn't Hercules. Was yeah, yeah, that's Hunky right. star of Hercules' legendary journey. Which I liked. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. fantastic. He was great. And Xena, it was, it was like a shared universe, Aries. I know. All of those can Cut be mine Bruce for Campbell. inspiration. Yeah, for the, the Beastmaster show was an American, Australian, Canadian television series uh, that aired October 9th, 1999. Hmm. Was it Kevin Sorbo? No, it was not. It was someone else, but it was decidedly not. And it ran until 2002. Okay. Oh, wow. And it, the guy who played the Beastmaster was Daniel Goddard. Yeah, I had no idea. That, there's so much that you can find inspiration from for these kind of high sword and sorcery. And if you're not satisfied with that, there's a second Conan film. There's a 2011 Conan film. There's the Death Stalker mm-hmm. movies. There's oh, Fire and Ice. There's Sword and the Sorcerer. There's there's all that whole era. Had, Conan spawned so many knockoffs. But the knockoffs yeah. just immediately made it drop. Even Conan the, the Destroyer made it just drop off immediately because he had this huge spike and like everyone was like every all the studios ran like like oh we have this Conan movie let's make. Everything and just like you said, Death Stalker, mm. Beastmaster, uh, Lady Hawk to a certain extent. Well, there's Lady Hawk. Was, I wouldn't consider it sword and sorcery. Lady really? Hawk is definitely a fantasy movie. Yeah, but it's not sword and sorcery. It's different. Hmm. It's been all I remember yeah. is Matthew Broderick. In but her. there's also movies like Dragon yeah. Slayer that brought it back up, and Lady Hawk brought it back up. There, Willow finally comes back around and, oh, and brings that Willow. that yeah. kind of sword and sorcery back. It, it's a genre that has never quite died, and despite the fact that a lot of the knockoffs were pretty bad. There yeah. are some gems. Oh, yeah. there's, there's the barbarians. There's barbarian queen. 
Uh, Barbarella. So, it's a yeah, good one. I mean, <laughs> De- Deathstalker 1, 2, and 3. And 4. Gore. Oh, the Gore movies. Wizards of the yeah. Lost Kingdom. Yeah. There are so many of these movies that you can draw inspiration from for any kind of a high sword and sorcery or shall we say pecs and boobs kind of game <laughs> you know you want a game that's going to be lower on the armor because you're yeah, not gonna who, who needs it yeah who needs armor naked except for a loincloth exactly <laughs> that's what you want from a conan game you you don't have time for any of that stuff that gets in the way of the action it slows you down it adds slows, weight slows you down it adds weight yeah. and those unnecessary clanks that chafe and get in the way of your oiling patterns. I mean, yeah. unless mm-hmm. you come across some dogs who just are bastards and need to be turned into a coat. Oh, but that's the coat. You know, that's yeah. not metal. That's yeah. not, uh, yeah. Steel is for killing. I want to see it. the extended scene where he's putting that cloak together. <laughs> he's, like he's just sitting there. sewing. Yeah. There's a montage scene of. <laughs> which then cuts to a montage scene of somebody teaching him to sew yeah. and make pelts. <laughs> it just it's a big. It's a big bone needle that. Yeah. <laughs> Aside from the the lack of armor, you you know you want big swords. You want flashy, swashbuckling kind of action. You want something that's not going to shy away from unfortunate uh, sexist memes from that time. You mm. know, women wear no clothes, but you know what? That's fine because the men wear no clothes at the same time. Everybody is in skivvies. Everyone's in their skivvies, even the fucking king. <laughs> like it's True. the kind yeah. of thing. Where it's it's going to be the kind of the, the setting that goes back to this time that never really truly existed, that only uh, had this sort of seed of proto development in the mind of a very disturbed man, but he created these these yeah. amazing fantasy scenes, which uh, led us to where we are today. Mm-hmm. There's a number of games that can pull this off. Oh, I I know what game I would use. What game would you use, Poppy? The only game. What game? My favorite game. Hammer Crawl. Hammer Crawl. <laughs> <laughs> nice. This is, and I am biased, sure. Yes. Is there any more beer? <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you why this is a Hammer Crawl game. And it's not just because you must crush your enemies. It's not just because you must crush your enemies and they're always like thieving and going into weird things and fighting weird things. And, it has more to do with the the random nature of it, right? You know, Conan leaves his slavery with literally the just the clothes on his back and some chains. And he has to find and loot everything. And I think that really, and some of the ridiculousness of just the scenarios, you know, just really lend itself to, ha- to hammer crawl. And that's not me, like, stroking the ego of the creator who is sitting to my left. Um, it, <laughs> it really, uh, yeah, he's, he's got a big old smile on his face right now. It really, to me, is just like, let's go into the dungeon, let's, let's fuck some shit up, and let's loot the dead bodies, and let's go on to the next thing. We might die. For those of you unaware, Hammer Crawl is a gaming method that I put together that creates on the fly, randomly generated, zero prep, old school tournament style dungeon crawls. It's fucking beautiful. It's, I've it's played a lot it. of fun. And we even have yeah. a podcast. So it's called Hammer Crawl. All one word. Check it out. Our logo kind of looks like Conan the Barbarian. It does. <laughs> 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 Playing a guitar shaped like an axe. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, okay. that That's a good suggestion. Anybody else? Something that you might want to use? There's the obvious just Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, Dungeons and Conan the Barbarian is one of the appendix in references for the original D&D written by Gary Gygax. There is also the... Not very well done, in my opinion, role-playing game of Conan the Barbarian. Oh, there are multiple role-playing games of Conan the Barbarian. The, I assume you're talking about the D20 one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I have all of those in PDF form, at least. My buddy Greg, our listener. Hi, Greg. Was, hello. hello. <laughs> our listener, Greg. You're great. Greg uh, got me into it back when we were living in Atlanta. And I remember, you know, for D20, it wasn't bad. For third edition, that is. I don't think it suited itself as well, but it was a very rich product. That book was, there were multiple books in that product line that were quite solid. Alex, thoughts? What would you do if you want to play Conan? Use some of the games that you know. So, going to want to get into a lot of fracas, says. I don't know if I mispronounced that or used it wrong. 
either way, there's going to be some, uh, there's going to be some do em ups, some battles. And part of that is going to be stumbling into your adventures. I feel like, and to, I guess, harken back to Hammer Crawl, that seems to fit that theme very well. It's like, well, I'm going this way and we're going to see what happens. And then, you know, two minutes later, you're caught up in some grand plot. Pretty much. Yeah. Everything that happened to them just sort of fell into their lap. Yeah. And that's yeah. awesome. You're, you're just like, well, by Crom, let it be. Like, I'm just going <laughs> to head into the horizon and, you know. That was a lyric from the John Lennon song that I don't remember, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, even the, even the idea of like, I fell into this cave. Cool. I found a sword. Right on. I'm going to come out, kill these dogs, make them into a coat. I just hear, you know, if you, I don't know if you've, any of you have listened to the Wolves of Zeramund <laughs> yet, but it totally sounds like something the wolves would do about like, really? Like, we're going to fuck some shit up and then I'm going to make clothing out of it. Cause <laughs> fuck you. And then like, I'm fed for a few days, and too. And I'm fed for a few days. And the DM's just like, um, okay, roll for, um, fuck it. Just here's some XP. That's awesome. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> and now you have some dog jerky. Well, uh, one quick thing that I also really enjoyed uh, to take from the books, at least, is the factor that you can just do anything there's a story where he climbs a tower and finds a elephant god that's been shackled for however long and decides to free it uh per the elephant god's request uh you can do dang near just about anything just craft it within the uh aesthetic of the conan universe mm. There's also um, Dungeon Crawl Classics. Yeah, that's that one system. that's a contender for oh, me. Is it Definitely. awesome? Because that's that's I'm I'm currently in a, a DCC game every other week with a with a buddy of mine, Aaron, and uh, it's 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 fun. I like that system. I mean, I, I you got me introduced to that system with the uh, the Space Marines. Yeah. We've talked about that a few times. So I th- I think that system would lend well to this. Dungeon Crawl Classics is a uh, fantastic game. If listeners, if you haven't listened to it, it's a kind of a it's, harkens back to old school D anD D with a slightly modern approach to the mechanics. Their tagline is "Party Like It's 1979," nice. and it's the kind of game where you make a group of peons. Like every player sitting at the table starts the game with four zero level characters, and then the GM leads the entire group, feeds them to a dungeon, and see who survives but dcc is brutal it is oh a my brutal, god it is gory game its combat system has some crazy critical results don't get attached to a character you make warriors <laughs> excel in doing crazy ass conan level stunts and shit and the magic especially harkens directly uh to this hyperborean or hyboria uh, hyborian this hyborian aesthetic that magic is dirty it comes from dark sources one does not simply cast magic missile no one takes a knife carves a letter out of their arm peels the flesh off holds it alight turns it into flame and from that spew forth these powerful bolts of eldritch flame so it's the kind of uh said it, it matches that so I want to le- I want to read some things from people because I asked this question online. I see, and this. I kind of want to start doing this every time. I, I like that I you do this. People out for their contributions. So Ryan Northcott, because uh, I, I recently so hey Google Plus is going away, and that's where I uh, used to do a lot of my game talk. So a lot of people will switch to a new platform called MeWe or MeWe or I don't know how it's pronounced. It's spelled MeWe. It's guess it's pros and cons. We're still feeling it out right now, but there's a big gaming community on there. So Ryan Northcott said, uh, the Conan RPG from Modifius <laughs> uh, because it's an actual Conan game. And I've never been a fan of licensed RPG, so it might not work. But uh, so that game is from Modifius, who has been producing. They are a production madhouse right now. They have produced a number of games. They produce the uh, Star Trek, the the current Star Trek role playing game that's out. They have a house system. They call it the two D twenty system. It's uh questionable i have not had time to read this game but from my exposure to the star trek game i have issues with it i would not use it but hey it's licensed it's got all the text it is an official conan rpg so if you want to play something official and you don't want to do d20 modifius has the conan rpg 2d20 system because 2d20s i guess are better than one one. (laughs) and that's something that our listeners can check out 
something else that was recommended to me, my buddy Chris Groff, back still back on Google Plus because it's still around, uh, but it's dying next year. R.I.P. Google Plus. R.I.P. He recommends Fate because yeah. everybody recommends Fate for everything. Uh, he thinks it's the best because the traditional tales of Conan are very pulpy and fast flowing. Combat is not a bogged down game of whack a mole. Characters are narratively <laughs> empowered. Conan is as strong, charismatic, and sneaky as needed. It's a game not based on past fail stat checks, but on succeeding, but potentially at a cost. Even I when you do fail, the game pushes on. Failure is not just a stop, it's a new twist on the plot. I and, like you know, when someone uses whack a mole properly. <laughs> yeah, that was so pretty amazing. Good. And I was oddly yeah. turned on. I don't know why. Wow. But, but by that or just by the word yeah, whack a mole? Uh, maybe both. It's hard to say. Whack a mole. Mm. My <laughs> my online buddy uh. Ash Law recommends Thirteenth Age. He says it handles barbarians really nicely. Uh, has a berserker class, which is in the Thirteenth Age Glorantha source book. Uh, for an alternate take on the concept, the rangers and rogues also fit the setting well. My buddy Sophie says uh, recommends Jaws of the Six Serpents from Silver Branch by a fellow named Tim Gray. It has a lot of DIY abilities of the system that's called the PDQ or the Pros Descriptive Quality System. I could be getting that wrong. It's a very heavy narrative system. She says it could work very well. Uh, and I have a number of people recommending other games. There, there's well there's one last game that I do want to give as an honorable mention, and unfortunately, I was unable to acquire it soon enough to give it a full read. And that game is called Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea. Whoa. It is... It's a Conan. It's a Conan game. It's apparently uh, quite popular. There's a Kickstarter out right now for a player's guide and really? GM screen. I'll link to that in the show notes. By the time this airs, I think it'll have like seven or six or seven days left. You should check it out. What's it's the really name of cool. it? It's called Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea. Or Hyborea. I think it's Hyperborea in the Hi book. Oh, wow. Well, I think in this game it's Hyperborea. Anyway, uh, I unfortunately don't have the capacity to talk about that game because I was unable to get a copy in time to read it. But I was able to get digital copies that I actually already had of a game that I consider the winner. A game that I would run. And I'll give you multiple reasons why, but this game is called Barbarians of Lemuria. Mm. It is fucking Conan with mm. all of the numbers filed off. And that, to me, is something that I find very appealing because it means I'm given a lot more freedom as a GM to alter the setting mm. and break away from canon. Whereas if you're playing with like a Conan game, if you're playing with a world that has like all of the Conan, you know, factions established, I feel that some GMs could have problems breaking away from that. Sure. Due to expectations of players who might be big grade A Conan fanboys. But if you say, I'm going to run a game in the spirit of Conan, I want to take the concepts of these characters and run them forward, but not necessarily be married to the setting you know kind of go our own way because as you were saying before we started recording alex some of the later books get a little bit racist right uh no that was me actually yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was dusty. yeah the books the books some of the books get books get a little bit right the un, there are racist undertones um heavily sexist undertones um, I've, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that one, they, they, yeah, they get a bit rapey in some scenes. So here's the deal: if you're playing a Conan game, <laughs> like, you're oof. going to be dealing with some sexist undertones. If you're Conan, playing a Conan yeah. game, you're going to be dealing with some very adult themes. If you have the right people and the right GM that you know know that up front, that's still going to be any any system you use is going to be a good system. But no, going into playing a Conan style game, you, there's going to be some questionable things. I'm not defending it. I'm just saying. So Barbarians of Lemuria has a very simple cover. Yeah, it does. Very Conan-esque. A warrior dude and a war and, and a chained woman yeah. attached to oh, him. Oh, with, with Fighting with, a tentacle monster. Yeah, oh, it kind of well. looks Sorry. like yeah. an H.P. Lovecraft, you know, end of yeah, the world yeah. with Conan. But that's fucking Conan right yeah, there on the cover of this book. Fair, Even with fair. the huge sword, yeah. yeah. So nice. I want to read a little bit about the intro to Barbarians of Lemuria. Chapter 1, Introducing Lemuria. 
It is a savage age of sorcery and bloodshed, where strong men and beautiful women, warlords, priests, magicians, and gladiators battle to carve a bloody path leading to the throne of Lemuria. It is an age of heroic legends and valiant sagas, too, and this is one of them. The sword and sorcery genre is a subgenre of fantasy generally characterized by sword-wielding heroes engaged in violent and exciting battles. The stories focus mainly on personal conflicts rather than world-endangering matters. The protagonists are much more stereotypical than in other types of fantasy. The heroes are all usually footloose wanderers and mercenaries who actively seek out fortune and adventure, finding mundane work deathly dull. The best sword and sorcery fiction is distinct from the fantasy of Tolkien and his imitators. It explores the human experience from a different, darker point of view. This is a heroic role-playing game set firmly in sword and sorcery genre. Post-apocalyptic world of thousands of years into the future, unrecognizable to anyone today. It has returned to an almost prehistoric state. A land of steaming jungles, vast untamed wilderness, horror-filled swamplands, and sun-baked deserts. Massive man-eating beasts roam the unexplored regions of Lemuria and beyond, from island-sized sea serpents capable of sinking war galleys to the huge jungle-dwelling dinosaurs that can swallow a man whole. Yeah? Dang! Yeah. I like that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that paints quite the picture. So that's Barbarians of Lemuria in a nutshell. In this game, you play a group of heroic sword and sorcery adventurers, much like <laughs> Valeria. Conan and what's his name? And there was Super Tai. Super Tai. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> For some reason, that name just falls out of my brain as soon as it is mentioned. <sighs> this game takes that genre and pushes it in a way that is approachable and easy to learn in ways that I don't feel that the D20 system, for example, okay. it has all of its ins and outs and all of these numbers that you need to track and you get to count your level and your experience points, you got to count your skill points, you got to keep track of all your things. This is a super, super simple game that focuses on being a fucking badass. I like it. It's it, yeah. your characters have Sounds good. four stats. Oh, that's easy. Four stats only. Strength, agility, mind, and appeal. You have four combat abilities. Initiative, mate. Mate. I'm down. Mate. All right. <laughs> Breeding with the finest Level, <laughs> level five mate. Melee. <laughs> Ranged and defense. I like it. That's I dig it. it. Nice. Wow. Everything else is measured by your former careers in life. Hmm. Your character today consists of everything that you used to be combined together so when you start the game you have uh four careers that you might have been in you could have been a slave you could have been uh, a peasant uh you could have been a um, massage therapist and uh you could have been an overworked say uh llama fucker counselor no <laughs> uh, you, you've got classic you got classic sword and sorcery archetypes that represent your background and each one of those is a skill set but you don't have to write down the skills. You can be like, I used to be a slave. And so if a situation comes up in the game where suddenly the GM's like, the only way for you to get across this vast pit of lava is for one of you to turn the wheel of pain. And you're like, dude, I got this. I'm good. It's on my sheet. Slave. And he'd be like, I don't know what a slave of ever. I saw Conan, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the job description. Turn the wheel of pain. Mm -hmm. okay. For 15 years. <laughs> Two six-sided dice. Roll mm -hmm. them. Add them together. And occasionally you might add a number. That number might, actually, might be a low number of your combat ability, like plus three. Hey, I'm really good at killing dudes. So you roll 2d6 plus three. Or... Instead, you would add your career, like, I need to turn the wheel of pain. Well, I've got three years as a slave. I'm good at turning the wheel of pain. You add it together. If it's nine or higher, success. If it's 12, critical success. <gasps> There's a little bit more than that. Yeah, but that's, no, that's the gist of it. And if awesome. it's snake eyes, you lose. Oh, no. I just you are on the wheel of pain. <laughs> I just realized something. What? Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Basically Conan. 
<laughs> Whoa. Well, See, I, I have elaborate. no idea what you're talking because I've never she watched Unbreakable. She has to turn the crank. So Unbreakable oh my Kimmy God, Schmidt you're right. never watched it. is a show on Netflix. Uh, yeah. It's amazing. And essentially, Kimmy Schmidt has the same background as Conan. That's right. She's captured at a young age. She's enslaved. And she's made to turn a crank. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I want to hear what's best in life for her. Crank you for being a crank. <laughs> I have no idea if I should laugh or shake my head at that. Probably both. Uh, um, <laughs> now that's comedy. <laughs> Maybe just have a stroke. So Barbarians of Lemuria is uh, a beautifully evocative game. I love the art inside of it, but I specifically love the heroic career system in that it takes, much like you've experienced, Dusty, with Dungeon Crawl Classics, your character doesn't have skills. No. No, you're like, oh, you were, you were a... Uh, a kitchen worker and you got tired of of the you know the lord on high getting all the all the wealth so you and your buddies are going to go into the dungeon you, you you figure hey you can chop a turkey up you can go ahead and chop up a goblin in a, in a cave so why not go be an adventurer exactly and this is the kind of game where you take your skills from your past life and just sort of lump them into the careers mm-hmm. that you do you when you create a character, you pick what what your life path was. Well, first I was first I was a blacksmith's son. Okay, so blacksmith. Then I was a slave. Then I was a gladiator, and then I became a thief. And then and I became now a king. I am, and now I am Conan. It's a Beatles song. <laughs> <laughs> so those four things you would rank in order, and you'd put some points into them to specify which ones you did and which ones affected you the most. Like, you know, I think he probably spent more years as a slave than anything. Yeah. So we put more points in the slave, but we put a couple points into gladiator too. All right. Yeah. And that basically defines your that character. Works. Your yeah. equipment, speaking of the fact that we're not wearing armor, your starting equipment consists of what do you want? <laughs> so you tell the GM, this is the concept that I have. And the GM says, okay, what equipment do you think you would have right now? Hmm. I have a loincloth. I have my father's sword. I have an accent of snakes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a pillowcase <laughs> full of snakes. And I have a troubled brow to put a crown on at some yes. point. You have a troubled brow. You write that shit down on the street, son. <laughs> troubled brow. So when you create a character, you're starting careers. You have available from the following career options. I think these about cover it. Alchemist, assassin, barbarian, Beast master. No. 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 Beggar, blacksmith, dancer, executioner, farmer, gladiator, hunter, magician, merchant, mercenary, minstrel. That's a lot of M's. Noble, physician, priest, sailor, scribe, sky pilot. I thought you were going to say Skype pilot for a moment. Like, <laughs> there are airships yeah. in this, but they're like eldritch creation kind of things. Uh, slave, soldier, Temptress, no. ah. and worker. Hmm. Worker's very broad. <laughs> <laughs> that about covers everything. Yeah, it does. Right. I mean, a worker could be like, I worked at H&R Block, or like... By H&R Block, you mean Hrang I... Rajanshan's block building? Uh, his quarry. Yeah, his quarry. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, obviously. rock quarry. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, yeah. Hrang Rajanshan. Hang yeah. Ray Johnson, Justin. if you're looking to sponsor a podcast. <laughs> That's uh, the name of my Justin Bieber cover band. <sighs> Barbarians of Lemuria. Hmm? You guys aren't excited about it as I thought you would be. I've, I've just, never played I've it. Never no, played it, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it sounds like It really does. <laughs> I usually get my most excited when I'm told about things I've never experienced. <laughs> well, there you go. No, I think the lack of it is because I think we've all we've had all at least put a, a a toe into like the fate system or yeah. uh, Savage Worlds or modern D twenty Dungeons and Dragons any number Palladium uh, any number of gaming systems I think anybody that's been here has put their their toe in like I said but sometimes you bring something to the table that every one of us is like <laughs> fuck I ain't ever heard of that fuck are you talking about <laughs> hey it looks good yeah. and I don't see anything because you're looking at the screen so yeah cool we'll go with it <laughs> yeah I, I, I couldn't get a print version I had to scramble for this one no it's, yeah. it's fine no I but, I, I yeah. saw a little bit as you were moving in it looks good hammer crawl so Barbarians <laughs> of Maria is by Simon Washborn of Beyond Belief Games it mentions its influences as Thongar of Lemuria Jirel of Jirel, the Zothic Circle, Hyperborean Tales by Edgar 
Rice Burroughs. The Barsoom series. Oh, wait. No, I misread that. Barsoom by Edgar Rice Burroughs. Hey, there you go. Fawford and the Grey Mouser, Brack the Barbarian, uh, Kane the Mystic Swordsman, Elric of Melnibini, uh, Conan the Barbarian, King Cole, Solomon Kane, Bran Mac Morn, and Cormac Mac Art, which I don't know. Those, uh, the Solomon Kane and the uh, last one you mentioned are also from uh, Robert E. Howard. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. I think all of the last yeah. ones were. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, apparently yeah, he was pretty Kane, prolific. Conan and uh, Kroll, or Cole, Cole the Conqueror, were the three big ones from Matt Ryder. I don't feel that I could totally do this system justice for us to play it out on the table just yet, but I, I read it recently, and of all the ones that I was looking at, I was like, this just seemed perfect. It seemed like the kind of game that, if you've been listening for a while, you know I like simplicity. I like, despite the fact that I love Rifts, I also really <laughs> like simplicity. And these days, for me to find a new game and play it, especially if I'm going to bring in new players mm-hmm. and maybe do a one shot or do a convention game, it needs to be a game that I can, I can, I can set some books out and I can teach the game in ten minutes. And this seems like that kind of game. Nice. Oh, you mean like Very. Palladium? Palladium is not something that I would ever <laughs> run for a one shot or a convention game unless I was assured that all the players already knew how to play. Very experienced, yeah. yes. And in that, I would thrive. I will never be there. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had Matthew here to totally wise crack and. Uh, I know I I I did not yeah. do a really good job at being an <laughs> asshole. Failed. I failed. I no, failed. No you're one good. can fill Matthew's shoes. <laughs> but nobody can fill Matthew's shoes. We miss you, bro. We miss you. Subutai. I don't really care. I don't know. You don't really care. I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matthew was not here tonight to claim the role of Conan. So tonight we are all I don't all think Conan, any of us could claim the Matthew's role of Conan. Matthew's more like the crazy wizard. <laughs> Like Mako? Mako. Okay. All right. Matthew's the wizard. I'm down with that. All right. Yeah. All right. What? Which one of you guys has a custom Arnold Schwarzenegger quote that you made up yourself? Uh-oh. Yeah. You have a custom Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah, quote? Yeah. Let's, let's try this one on. Besides, this isn't going to translate too well for the podcast. Is listeners. it? Can it? It's, it's a little visual, but you'll get the idea. All right. This is my feast. This is your face. Watch for it. I love it. Yeah, watch for it. Stuff. Watch for it. It's supposed to smack. <laughs> like that. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Nicely done. Yeah. Okay, give us your best Arnold Schwarzenegger impression, folks. Oh, let's God. let's start with Poppy. You got this, Poppy. Fuck you. There Give you go. the chopper. Uh, uh, Alex has already given his. I'm going to give mine. I, uh... <laughs> Dusty. Uh, see you at the party, Richter. <laughs> oh wait, I got one more. It's not a tumor. It's not, it's not a tumor. tumor. It's, it's not a tumor. <laughs> can, can I also just throw in, I don't like you very much. <laughs> this has been a fun episode, y'all. Let's go ahead and close this one out. Yeah. So uh, we've been talking about Conan the Barbarian, 1982. Classic film. If you haven't seen it, what fucking rock are you living under? And I'm sorry we just spoiled everything for you, but that's what you get for listening to this having not seen the movie you goofed uh we had a lot of games that we talked about but i honestly i think barbarians of lemuria is where it's at it's what i would pick it looks good yeah looks really good sounds good the close runner up i'd say would be dungeon crawl class yes like like that i think can really evoke that zero to not quite a hero but Mm. something gritty and gross and uh, i think it can do conan very well but you've been listening to Half Movies Will Game. You should, if you like this episode, mm-hmm. leave us a tip. <laughs> hey, we have a what tip Dusty jar. Said, yeah. Just the tip. <laughs> Just the tip. Oh. No, we do have a tip jar. You what? should check it out. Maybe uh, we keep we keep waiting, 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 waiting for our listeners to drop a tip so we can buy a pizza. Matthew really wants a pizza. Yeah, Matthew and, wants just a yeah. little Caesar's. Take home heat pizza. Just hot one of those ready. $5 yeah. hot and Just a hot and ready. Guys. But we're also going to be experimenting with some bonus content. Yes. That we might soon be locking behind some extra stuff. These won't a be main episodes. Paywall. Uh, yeah, a yeah, paywall. Yeah. But, you know, donation based mm-hmm. side feed that you might, it's if you wish, Patreon. 
Well, we haven't done Patreon yet, but we're we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're working on it. We are at a point. We've been doing this for over a year now. Yeah, I think we have 35 episodes now. 20, 30 something. Yeah, wow. it's 31 yeah. or 32. Yeah. But we also have some bonus stuff, but we kind of want to start paying some of the bills here. And it, that'd be nice. That'd be cool. You know. Get us some faster internet. Get us, get us some. <laughs> 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 Pay for this mass amount of beer and pizza that Matthew just wants pizza, guys. Come on. All yeah. these pizza. microphones and mix boards and oh yeah. Lord. <laughs> the doohickeys. Well, we've got some special bonus content coming mm-hmm. soon and we'll post about it. Uh, we're actually about to record some in just a few minutes here. So uh, uh, stay tuned to our social feeds to hear more about how you can subscribe to that. And what is the next set of movies that we are going to look at? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because what's, there's, what's there, our... there's, there's a thing that we've been we've been starting to do. If you've been listening for the last, you know, maybe eight or ten episodes, uh, well, no, maybe not that many, maybe half dozen. Uh, we've been putting out a number of movies to our audience listeners, and they get to choose by voting what we are going to watch and record. And this was one of those that everyone it was a resounding. Conan, if I remember correctly. It was a resounding Conan. We have not picked a next episode because we were kind of putting the votes on hold throughout the holidays. Oh, that's right. scheduling's that's been right. weird. So I'll tell you what, Dusty. Yes. What's our next movie? Oh, my God. You're really going to want me to do that. So you're going to let me choose a movie? Yep. Right now. I just came up with this idea on the spur Fuck. of the moment. <laughs> I love you, but I hate you. Um, I got it. Oh, no. Okay. I've, I've got it. Because... And I say this only because of the time of year we're going into. We are circling into the holiday Christmas season. So I am going to go with the best Christmas movie ever made. And that is Die Hard. Yes. Yes. Die Hard. Yes, it is, it is a Christmas movie. I don't care what other people say. You I don't care. Yay, motherfucker. I don't care what Mother Mr. Trucker. Bruce Willis has to say. That He says it's just a movie. It is the Christmas movie. I'm down. All right. I don't think it's the Christmas movie, but it's definitely a Christmas. What movie. is the is Christmas, Christmas movie, movie. for, what for is me? The, yeah. Gremlins. I can go with that. Yeah. So like for me, like the th- like there are two Thanksgiving yeah. movies for me: uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, which is for the holidays, see, and uh, Trading Places. Okay. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. But a Christmas movie. Holidays. Christmas movie is Die Hard. Yeah. Okay. I'm done with that. Batman Returns. Yeah, it's a good Christmas. Yeah. Movie. Yeah. yeah. Oh, All right. I like a uh, mixed nuts personally. That's my Christmas movie. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and close this out. Die Hard's going to be our next movie. Uh, we're going to be recording that in two weeks. Uh, so stay tuned to the feed. We're going to have some bonus content coming out. You should check us out on Instagram. Check us on Facebook. Check us on the Twitterverse. On check the us on Discord thingy. We have a Discord server. Come where you can chat join us with us on Discord. And talk about the movies. It's active. We've got a few people. We've Hello, Ben. Hello. Uh, Tin Man. Tin Man. Yeah, Matthew Everybody. is Matthew is a robot. I'm <laughs> Dusty is a gravity well. I'm just uh, Poppy Beaujolais. <laughs> anyway, come on down, say hi, chat with us. And anyway, you've been listening to Half Movies Wheel Game. I'm Dusty. I'm Nathaniel. And joining us again as guests. Poppy Beaujolais. And Alex. Thanks again for listening, folks. And we'll talk to you next time. I guess. And thanks for joining. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you, you guys. for having me. Yeah. yeah. This is a little bit last minute, but I'm glad you could both join in and keep the reel rolling. It's been a blast. That wasn't wasn't Arnold at all. (laughs) Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're still pretty new to the scene and we'd love to get your feedback. If you like what you hear, please leave us a review on iTunes with your thoughts. Good or bad, they really help us get the word out. If you want to say hello, drop us a line on all of the usual social media sites. You can find the links right there in the show notes. You can also leave us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Have Movies Will Game is a Breakfast Puppies podcast production, and our episodes are distributed under CC BYND 4.0 license. Our opening theme is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids with introductory narration provided by Isaac Scher. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.